That lick I'm calling the the Borlai Limbreaker. Okay, and it's because it's a phrase that I got from Kiergo Borlai. If you're not hip to Kiergo, you should definitely check him out. He's kind of taken the drum community by storm over the last few years. It's not often that I do uh, videos uh, based on someone else's specific uh, thing, you know, and I noticed a lot of guys do that on their channels, you know, they put these thumbnails on their videos with these big, you know, bold text that's like, oh, you know, Vinny call you the lick or, you know, uh, Buddy Rich, greatest lick ever, you know, and they're, obviously they're trying to generate, you know, clicks and, you know, then they learn, you know, this, the kind of the, the bare minimum to do the thing and so they can explain it. But I think one of the key differences that allowed me to feel comfortable doing a video on someone else was the fact that I'd met him a few times and I had a discussion with, with Giergo about, about doing a video and I've, I've, uh, I took a lesson with him uh, and it was during this lesson that I saw him do this, this lick and uh, I stopped him and I was like, dude, what is that? And, and so here's a clip of that. Yeah. Okay, pretty cool, huh? I went to see him recently, actually, at the, at the at the world famous baked potato, and I, you know, had a discussion with him about. I was like, oh, I really like that lake, and I'm thinking about doing a video, and we talked about it, and then, and then he went back and played the second set, during which, like, he took the solo, and and he turned on that lick for like one second, and I was like, oh god, you know, it, it was crazy, you know. Here, here's that clip. <laughs> I got a kick out of it, you know. I mean, again, I think it's a, I think it's a, a cool sounding phrase because it's kind of chaotic and frantic. So I took the same approach to this that I, that I take to all other things, which is like, okay, let's put this thing on the grid. Like, let's break it down. What is it? Okay. So <clears throat> the Borlai Limbreaker, what this is, is it's over top of 16th notes and it's, it's a seven note phrase. Okay. So it repeats uh, every seven 16th notes. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll turn on the click here so you can hear where one is and where the click is. And I'll play uh, a very simple two bar phrase that involves this lick. Okay, here's that. How many times can we play groups of seven sixteenth notes within two bars? That was my first question. Uh, the answer is four. That's how many times. You start on the count of one, you play sixteenth notes, you accent every seventh one, and you'll end up on the, the count of four, right? So that's what I did. I, 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 you know, I played the like you play it four times and then that puts you on the count of four and then I stop. And at that point, once you get comfortable, you can play something on the count of four, like four sixteenth notes or, or just stop, like whatever you want to do, you know, but it's important to me to know like where this thing drops me off. And that's the answer, like count of four of the second bar. Let's break it up. So instead of playing the, the, the lick four times, let's just play it two times, the first two times. All right. And we still, we start on the count of one. Okay. So let's just do it one time, okay? Once you get physically comfortable with doing it, then you can kind of cross the line from academic exercise to musical phrase, okay? So at this point, because I'm familiar with how it sounds, then like, okay, it's a thing that I can now sing. And I can now sing it over top of a pulse in my head or music that I'm listening to, okay? So check it, do it, do it, check it, do it, check it, check it, check it, that's do it, that kind of thing, okay? So being able to sing it um, is, is tre importante, as they say. Okay, so you can see at the end there, I played it all four times because, you know, I, I felt kind of comfortable 
you know, doing that. Like after you internalize playing it, you know, we played it two times and that fit within one bar. And that actually sounded like kind of a cool fill. But the goal is, was for me was to be able to play this like at least four times over a two bar phrase, right? Like we talked about in the beginning. Okay, so we practiced one and two, right? The, the, the doing it twice, time one and time two. And now um, I practiced it separately on time three and time four, but it doesn't start on one. It starts on the and of four, okay? One, two, three, four, and. Okay, that's where the third instance of this starts, okay? So I practiced that for a while, like just the, the third time and the fourth time, but starting it in the correct place, right? So that sounds like this. Breaking it up into two, two chunks of two really helped me with this, and in order to kind of spoon feed that to myself uh, for, for like memorization purposes, uh, I would accent the first one, okay? The first group of two. I'd be like, one, two, two, second, two, test, two, second, two, test, two, second, two, test, two, step, ooh, bam, two, step, two, get two, two, step, jagged, two, test, two, jagged, two, test, two, jagged, two, test, two, jagged, two, test, two, step, ooh, bam. Okay, that's what I memorized. So now I know how it sounds. Now it's just a matter of playing it in a way that sounds similar to what's in my head, just like all things, okay? That's the process. That's what we're doing, okay? So another thing that helped me uh, kind of differentiate between the two groups of two was playing the first group of two with my right hand on a different tom. And then on the second group of two, I played it on a separate tom. Okay, so let's try that. One, two, three, Okay, so you can see I'm starting to make the faces at the end there because I'm just able to kind of to kind of do this sometimes. Like I'm still getting to the point where like I can do it, you know, in, in a relaxed way, which is you know the thing I always talk about in my videos. You know, that when you you the question of like, well, when do I stop practicing this? And the answer is like, well, when I can do it, you know, at various tempos, and when I can do it and relax while doing it because I want to sound relaxed while I'm doing it and having command of dynamics. Uh, you know, loud notes and soft notes and being in control of that stuff uh, and not requiring like 100% of my effort in order to do it. Uh, because if it's taking you to 100% to do it, then it's going to sound like that. And that's not relaxed and that's not grooving, you know, and I wanted it to kind of groove. Um, so that's pretty much it. Groups of seven 16th notes played four times in a row ends you on the count of four. And this lick is definitely not a toy. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please click like. If you liked it, please please click thumbs down. If you didn't like it, leave a comment. Um, please, uh, you know, share this video with friends. Subscribe, because I'm not planning on stopping making these videos. And, uh, you know, let's keep the good thing going together. You know, free internet content that helps spread the knowledge. All right, let's take the mystery away. Let's practice. Let's all get good. Let's remove the suck. All right, thanks.